like to introduce uh, James Clark, Global Manager of Monitoring, discussing Nagios XI cool tips and tricks. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for uh, James Clark. Really, it should be just called uh, Nagios tricks because <laughs> they're tricks, not tips. And uh, they're cool to me. May they might be cool to you guys as well. They're really just me thinking out of the box on how to take care of some issues that I was having in specific uh, instances. Um, going to do a little bit about me, go over some of the tips and tricks, and then also just briefly mention some of the scripts I've released, and then any questions and answers. Um, I've been in the IT industry since uh, 88. Uh, I've been using Nagio since around 2003. Uh, I switched to XI in uh, uh, 2010. Uh, I work for IT Convergence, as he said, as a global manager of monitoring. We're an Oracle house. We uh, do hosting and manage services for uh, Oracle databases. And we also do some prof professional services. And soon, we'll be doing monitoring as a service. Um, and there's a link to my personal web page that has some of my scripts on it that are not on the exchange, although my bigger scripts are on the uh, Nagios exchange. Uh, when I came here last year, I worked for a company that didn't allow me to mention their name. American Eagle Outfitters. Uh, <laughs> why I couldn't, I don't know. Uh, but I, I worked for them, and uh, when I first started this presentation, I was still working for them. Uh, I just went to IT Convergence uh, in the last two months, three months. Um, so this first slide that I have here is what my environment looked, at, looked like in uh, American Eagle Outfitters, where they had the corporate data center, a uh, um, physical XI box, and a bunch of gear man workers, uh, then we had all those different firewalls leading to different sections of the uh, data center, different data centers, different zones, you know, DMZ, PCI zone, the uh, web data center. We had all that stuff talking back and forth. I just wanted to show you guys the size of the environment I was working with at uh, American Eagle. We were doing, uh, I'm trying to remember how many, maybe uh, 1,500 hosts and close to 10,000 service checks, I believe. And that was just in the corporate one. That didn't include the uh, web uh, data center XI install. Um, now on to some of the, thi some of the tricks I've done. Uh, we, at, at, at American Eagle, <laughs> we had uh, over 100 AIX servers. And the AIX admin team was very small. They didn't have a lot of time to deal with me, and they didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they were just getting more and more servers added into it. So any time they asked me to monitor something else, on their servers, and I had to add a new plugin. I had to get the uh, uh, NRPE restarted. Well, they got sick of doing that. I had the access to upload the plugin, but not to restart uh, the NRPE process. So I created a way to uh, uh, do this. And some of the Nagios employees didn't like this method, but they're like, "Yeah, it'll work." Um, <laughs> basically, I added a command to the NRPE config file uh, to name it whatever you want to name it. And instead of putting an actual uh, uh, script uh, name there, I used that as the first argument. So when I then called it, I could give it whatever plugin uh, name that I wanted to run that I copied up to there without having to restart NRPE. There is, of course, security concerns with that because uh, somebody could do uh, some nested folders and do a you know period period slash period period and get out of your folder. So you got to make sure you only allow from the Nagios IP. Uh, trust your network, have everything else you know, solid so that you don't have the, uh, those concerns. Um, the another thing, and <laughs> Spencer really hates me for this one, uh, uh, <laughs> but, <it was laughs> but uh, I had uh, check by SSH with password. I couldn't get um, uh, keys to work in this particular instance, so we why did that pop up? So we, um, uh, I did this. I installed SSH pass on uh, my Nagio server, and I just created a quick little bash script to uh, to wrap it and then do whatever command I wanted to do. So in this case, I was checking my FreeNAS server, and it was just impossible to get for me to get the uh, uh, keys working for SSH. So I just used this and, and, and passed this over with the uh, Arg1 was the password for the SSH, the user, and then whatever command I wanted to run. 
I was just checking the disk space on that, on that FreeNAS server. And as I said, I didn't care about the security concerns. It was my own personal network. Um, another uh, thing I did was at American Eagle, this is another example from them, uh, the web team that managed all the web, all the web servers for their e-commerce site didn't want to install NRPE on the servers, but they also didn't, and they, and they wanted to only have one location for the, um, for the checks. And they didn't want to do check by SSH, use the check by SSH that's built into, you know, comes with the Nagios plugins. So that we did it this way, and you, using this script here, you can actually run a script that's local to your uh, Nagio server on a remote server or a Perl script. Um, again, on the remote server that's local there, so you only have to modify it at one location, didn't have to keep modifying it uh, on the servers. And the scripts for them did constantly need updated, so that's why we wanted to only have to modify it uh, in one location. Uh, known issues, it must be a script. I could not find the command uh, way to execute a binary on a remote server from uh, the Nagios. Uh, and for some reason, when Nagios Core 4 came out, uh, I had to write a quick little wrapper script to do that. I couldn't just use the command itself as a command definition in Nagios. I, I could never figure out why I did that. But other than that, it, st it still works, and they're still using it to this day. I get calls every once in a while asking me how something works. Um, uh, another little tr uh, way I did to uh, uh, alert different groups based on the time of day, there was uh, one group that managed the on-call for, I can't remember what it was now, I think it was the iSeries stuff. Uh, was on call Monday through Thursdays, and another group was on call Thursdays through uh, Sundays. So we did that through uh, escalations and special time periods. And you can see them there where uh, PKMS, that's what it was. Uh, PKMS, uh, Monday through Thursday group, uh, Friday through Sunday group, and then the managers always got the escalations. But I used escalations to do that instead of uh, uh, the normal contact stuff so that only the groups the groups would only get the stuff when they were on call. Um, check for a new uh, Unix mount point. Um, again, overburdened AIX uh, uh, team, but we were also using this for Linux. But we monitor all the mount points as a separate check. We don't use uh, check disk and then you know do the different thresholds all in one thing because they may go to different contact groups depending on what type of amount it was. Uh, if the Unix admins added a new mount point, they needed to uh, let us know so that we could add a check for it. And if they forgot to let us know, well, we'll find out when it gets filled and they'll ask us why it wasn't uh, alerted. So I uh, wrote a Nagios, uh, uh, did a Nagios command. Uh, I wrote a plugin, check new disk, and created a Nagios command that uh, calls that. And it's basically a wrapper for uh, uh, check NRPE that then goes out and runs the check disk command with a very nice long argument. Um, that's, this is the bash script itself. Basically, after I do the, uh, uh, this command you'll see on the next screen, I exclude all the known mount points on it so that it uh, would then return with that if uh, there's no new mount points. If a new drive became available, it would uh, not equal that and then alert us. That was the, that's what the command would look like after. Yeah, it can get re it can get really really long, um, but as you can see, I'm just uh, excluding you know root, user, home, all all the different folders, so that uh, I could only check what they wanted to get checked. Um, custom SNMP trap handling. I don't know how many people are using uh, traps with uh, XI. Uh, the reason I implemented this, we were using site scan to monitor the building, the uh, HVAC, the power, all that kind of stuff. And it, sent tra it would send traps, but every single one was uh, uh, normal status, no matter if it's an issue or whatever. It, it, so I had to write a custom thing to parse the, um, the string of the SNMP trap to figure out if it was critical, warning, or whatever. Um, and what I did, I just made a copy of the SNMP trap handling uh, Python script to SNMP trap handling SS for site scan. And I modified that to uh, uh, do what I needed to do. And you just have to modify the um, SNMP INI file, config file, whatever, uh, 
to uh, make sure it calls the, uh, the new trap handling Python script instead of the original one that should be uh, on normal circumstances. Yeah, that's the, that's the line right there where it'll send all the, all the pertinent information from the trap to the uh, plugin. Uh, newer on call handling. Last year I talked about, uh, this is, and this is for XI only here. Uh, last year I did a talk on, on call and uh, um, the biggest drawback for that was that it couldn't, or you had to restart Nagios every day. And I had it doing it at 7 a.m. every morning. I wasn't there if something happened and Nagios didn't restart properly, well, bam, I got an issue. Um, I also, this, with this one, I was also able to create a um, link to show you who was on call. Uh, it does not create the on-call data. You have to supply it some other way. We were doing it in a um, SharePoint calendar that would automatically export, and I'd grab the data every morning with but just FTP in it from a script. Um, Works, this will work with escalations as well. Uh, it adds a new notification handler is the way it does it. This is available on the exchange uh, and, it, and it, it, uses, it creates a new notification handler but it then still follows the user's notification preferences in XI. So if they only want warnings, no criticals, or, not, or now that they support different methods per uh, SMS as well, it would follow all that kind of information as well. Uh, and that's the real crappy component I wrote. Uh, uh, basically, that's, that's what the contents of the file was. It had the group description, the group alias, and the user was on call. And then that correlates to a user that's in Nagios XI and how it would get the information. Uh, then there's a bunch of, there's a couple email scripts that uh, I did make available on the uh, uh, exchange as well. I'm gonna breeze through this here because I'm getting there on time. Um, the, these, these scripts already existed, but they all, I can't remember what authentication they used, but I needed to use NTLM authentication for uh, uh, Active Directory for the email. So I hacked together a bunch of the scripts to uh, use NTLM authentication. And as I, sa as I said, it can be found on the exchange. Uh, acknowledged by email. Uh, there is a one called NAG Mail Act. I again modified it so that it would use NTLM authentication against the, uh, against Exchange. And the nice thing is with this, you know, if you're on call, you don't have to carry around everything uh, possible. You can just use your cell phone and do a quick reply to an email notification to uh, acknowledge an issue. And, and that was heavily used at American Eagle. And again, it's on, it's on the Exchange. And I give credit to the original authors, but as I said, it, it, it changes the authentication method. Um, and, ev and every server monitored the, the same mailbox because the servers all had their own identification. It, you, would, you would do a reply and add a one, two, or three to the subject line, and that would uh, tell the servers which, which emails they needed to look at. And then the, another email, they have email delivery script or monitoring wizard in XI, but again, it doesn't use NTLM. Uh, so I hacked together one to... Uh, use NTLM authentication for this email as well. Short little script that just, uh, uh, don't mind my coding, but a short, short little script uh, that uses, uh, 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 that does that. And then this one um, is a Ruby script that goes out and reads the email, which is the same one from earlier, the check email uh, subject. Um, there are, as I said, there's other scripts uh, of mine on the exchange. Just look for the user or owner, Bandit BBS. Um, I'm always browsing the forums, offering help when, I, when, when need be. Uh, I still keep up with those uh, um, scripts that I have on the exchange that I don't use anymore because not, not needed where I'm at now. And uh, there's a few other things that are on my uh, site that was linked earlier in this presentation. But that's about it. Right on time. Oh, yes. So I actually have two, but they're, they're easy. Sure, go ahead. So the, with the on-call rotation stuff that you were doing, yes. it looks like you're kind of recreating pager duty. I don't know if you're familiar with that at all. Yes, but I don't have to go through the internet well, that's and rely on that. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is, was, was that intentional, or did you just you didn't care whether, uh, as far as pager duty is concerned, did you care, yeah, I'm doing the same thing they're doing, we don't have to pay for it? or Well, you know, it's mainly that. 
Okay. It, it, it really is mainly that. And it's, um, we already had the calendar and everything because the help desk there also would call people and stuff like that as well, or the, uh, the knock would call people. So we already had the calendar there for everybody on call. So it wasn't anything new I was adding in there. I just added in the uh, uh, grabbing of the data for Nagios to use to, uh, for the on-call rotation. So it wasn't that big of a change of process for okay. me. All right. And then the second, with the mail handling that you're doing, uh, have you considered using proc mail to just send commands into Nagios API? And mm -hmm. I, have, I haven't done any of that. Okay. All right, thanks. Other questions? So first, uh, thank you for the tips. You obviously have a survivor instinct. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Regarding the AIAC servers, uh -huh. uh, do you think your previous unnamed employer will be taking consulting hours for installing Puppet? Because uh, so you think they'll be doing what? Do you think they'll be requiring consulting hours from you to install Puppet for their AI <laughs> environment? <laughs> the, the, I, I wish, but no, they, they, they won't be. But I do get emails from them quite often uh, asking me how this is working, how that's working. And I'm friends with that Linux, the Linux admin took over the Nagio server. So I am friends with him and I do answer his questions as best I can remember. So, so your scripts that were labeled bad, 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 they're not going? That was personal. <laughs> that was a personal one, the bad, bad, bad one. <laughs> They're not going obsolete anytime soon. No, 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 no. Great. Thank you. Anyone else with any questions? Is there anything uh, that you're working on currently? Any upcoming projects that you have? Just 100 hours a week I'm putting into my job. Okay. Started a new job and it's crazy. If anybody ever needs any help, Mike Weber is a phenomenal contractor. <laughs> I think that, uh, that about wraps it up. Let's, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, give uh, James a big round of applause. Thank you again.